Senate President Therese Murray has proposed a ban on all gifts and freebies to doctors from pharmaceutical companies, a move pharmaceutical companies call anti-business. If the legislation passes, violators could face fines up to $5,000. Ah, the beach, a place for doctors to relax and reconnect with their pharmaceutical representatives. But John Luchtenberger of Targanta Therapeutics says the idea that drug companies are handing out exotic vacations and other perks is way off the mark. Well, the federal government's gotten involved, and if you do, do, uh, do that sort of thing, you can actually be sent to jail for Medicare fraud. But the perception of doctors on the take sticks in the craw of this man. He's responsible for one of the toughest ethics policies in the country. It's one of the um, areas that physicians have pushed back a little uh, is saying, I'm, I'm insulted that anybody would think that I can be influenced by a simple thing like a pad of paper or a pen with a logo on it or a hat or a lunch. But Dr. Stephen Tosi says public perception is backed up by research that shows even small tokens can influence which drugs are prescribed. Meanwhile, both sides agree that simply banning gifts may not be enough to lower drug prices. I think the jury is out on that. A very similar bill was passed in Minnesota uh, several years ago. There's been absolutely no change in prescription habits, and there's been absolutely no change in the cost. And if drug companies don't spend their money on gifts, they may just spend more on advertising. All I want is to get in here and live under your nail. They can also funnel money into free samples, which would not be banned by the Murray Bill. They're trying to give us more samples, and we're having to halt that back because we don't need them. Patients often eagerly accept the free samples, but pay more in the long run by sticking with the name brand drug instead of a generic. But manufacturers argue that the really big money goes into finding cures. Fifteen years ago, there were no treatments for MS, and uh, hundreds of thousands or actually millions of patients were going to end up in wheelchairs or cognitively impaired. The reality today is most of those patients are having their disability delayed. Whether or not the Senate approves Therese Murray's bill, lowering drug prices will likely remain a thorny challenge. All right, and with me now are Dr. David Coleman of Boston Medical Center, which banned gifts back in September of 07, and Dr. Thomas Stossel of Brigham and Women's, who says there is no evidence that gifts sway doctors. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. David, why did your hospital go ahead and make this move it was bef before the bill was even filed? Why did you feel it was necessary? Well, our uh, faculty felt quite strongly that it was important to uh, take more control of the uh, educational forums at, at our institution and as part of that to take more control of the content and the, um, the ways that uh, our trainees and our faculty interact with uh, commercial vendors. And as, as part of that initiative, we chose to uh, eliminate the distribution of free gifts. What kind of stuff was it, by the way? What kind of gifts? Was, well, it wasn't lavish trips and that kind of thing. What was it? It was largely uh, pens Kitch. and books and small things that yeah. people could carry away with but them. But it would have the logo on it, Viagra or Lipitor or That's whatever right. it was. Yeah. That's right. Now, Tom, you've described this as, as, as trivial and, and, and unnecessary, but I mean, what about the, the perception of a conflict of interest? I mean, in recent years, People have come armed with knowledge. You know, they see all these advertisements on television. They go running their dog. No, I want Lipitor. I want this one because I, you know, or whatever it is. We want that because we know about it. It could be a, an appearance of conflict if a doctor is taking gifts from one of these big pharmaceutical Well, first companies. of all, Emily, when the patients come and they want the drug, they might be right that they need <laughs> the drug. You can't, yeah. you don't prescribe what you've never mm -hmm. heard of. But the, the, as far as the, the gifts are concerned, the, the gifts are over. They're gone. If I never see another company mug or, uh, for that matter, a WGBH bag, uh, I won't be upset about that. But th what concerns me is this is the cutting edge of a powerful anti-business animus that uh, we think about it. You know, it's not just $5,000 fine. It's two years in jail. I mean, the, fun the profound disrespect that uh, the Senate would even think of such a thing is a reflection of really misinformation about uh, drug right. marketing. There's two things here. There's one thing to ban it. There's another thing to make it against the law. Correct. Do you support a ban? Uh, an individual hospital is just saying, we're not going to allow this, we're not going to tolerate it as an ethical policy within sure. the hospital. I mean, I would have said I was pro-choice, that if you feel you can't control yourself, if a drug rep gives you a pizza slice, don't take it. Uh, if, as I believe, physicians are capable of making those kind of uh, decisions, 
it's okay. But as I say, that the, the, this, this, uh, the, the, this parade is on the way, and I think the gifts are just going to go. Uh, but the fact that the state gets into it mm -hmm. is a reflection of the hysteria um, that's behind that. Do you think the state should be involved? Well, I, I really think the uh, profession should be involved. And I think uh, legislative remedies are uh, uh, often have many unintended consequences. And uh, I think the fact that the legislature is involved reflects the fact there's great public interest in this. And I, I uh, would, would always prefer that we as prof professionals uh, take the lead. And this is part of the reason that we chose at our institution to, to do so. Tom, you, you actually have some connections with um, some farmers of Biogen, I think, is you're an advisor there. My, my point being, do you think you need to disclose if, if the doctor takes money in, or, or, or gifts, whatever, from a pharmaceutical company and then prescribes that drug, do they have an obligation to their patients to let them know there's a connection? Well, we're talking about different things. I mean, if you're, it, 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 I'm very proud to disclose my connections with companies. I'm not no longer associated with Biogen, but I'm associated with other companies. I think disclosure is fine. I think patients, by and large, don't care. I, don't, I think that uh, to add to already limited physicians' time, um, I, don't, I think that when the self-congratulation is over, medicine is not going to be changed by a lot of this. But I, I do want to comment about this research that supposedly shows that doctors are biased. And what this is about is if I give you a pen, it, has a hotel logo on it. Now you're, I do an image and your brain lights up. Mm -hmm. And if I give you a diamond ring, I don't happen to have one, <laughs> your brain lights up in the same place. Conclusion, all gifts should be banned. Now my next anniversary, I'm gonna, you better give me that pen back so I can tell my wife I'm giving you a pen. <laughs> I mean, this is what passes for scholarship in this area. I think one of the intents here, anyway, as I understand in the legislation, is that it would make eventually make these drugs cheaper because they they wouldn't be prescribed as frequently because doctors wouldn't be taking well as many freebies or as many items that are directly associated with it so they might more often prescribe a generic drug would that happen and would it make these drugs cheaper well the i think the legislation is in part uh, responding to the fact that the advertising and marketing costs in uh, the healthcare industries are is quite high and uh, as part of that cost is the uh, marketing that involves gifts and uh, uh, free meals, et cetera. So there, there's certainly some incentive, I think, to reduce cost through reducing these activities. But I think more importantly, the legislation is really intended to ensure that therapeutic decisions are made uh, based solely on the uh, best available evidence uh, and based on uh, the least expensive well, uh, yeah. therapeutic I mean, it's equivalent. common sense. Back, uh, you know, several decades ago, there was the payola rules in radio. I mean, just to stop people from playing records, not necessarily because they were the best, because they were getting money to play them. It's the same kind of concept that became against the law. Whether they needed a law to make that happen is questionable, but certainly it, it did because otherwise, it, it, some, you know, it, it wasn't necessarily the the market demand that was making this happen. Isn't it the same? Well, I mean, we can have an interesting discussion about where sort of sociability ends and bribery begins. And the the tape segment pointed out that there are very severe laws against bribery, and there are plenty of attorneys general out there looking for uh, ways to track that down. And there's whistleblower laws that you can take 30 percent of the take. Uh, if you catch someone involved in a bribe. So I think we're pretty well covered uh, on that front. But I think you asked about the costs, that 60% of all drugs now are generic in this country. Nine out of 10 of the most widely prescribed drugs are generic. So, and 10% of health care costs are drugs. So I, I don't think this is going to save uh, right. a lot of money. Do you think it's going to go through in the legislature? I don't know. Yeah. All right, Dr. David Coleman and Dr. Thomas Stossel, thank you so much for coming. Appreciate it. Pleasure. All right, when we continue, the life of iconic radio talk show host, Jerry Williams.